Nothing excites us like Jesus Cause in his presence there's freedom All of our sin is forgiven So we give to him the highest praise
encourage you today, kids. Jesus knows each and every one of you, and he loves you. So let's raise our hands and sing to Jesus. I'm so glad you guys are here today. We have so much fun coming your way. Just wait. We're going to go see Mr. Christian. We're going to go see Mr. Mitch. We've got some fun stories to be told and all kinds of things happening today. So I know we just did worship. I need you all to settle on down now. Sit on down. Find a place. We're going to get started. Here we go. Hi, friends. Welcome to week three. So excited, you guys. This is talking about power. Today's main focus is Power. Hear it again. What's the focus of today? What's the focus of today? Good. Don't forget to say power. Good. Now, remember, if you're in God's family, you will receive power because that's what the Bible verse is about. All right. All right. Let's see it. You had two weeks to practice. This is the third week. Let's see what you got. We're going to review and we're going to do it with Mr. Beatbox. A Mr. Beatbox. A Mr. Beatbox. 
Good to see you, and good to be seen, my friend. Boom, like the jacket. Thanks, it's my Eddie Murphy jacket. I like it. Take the lead, take the lead. Ha <laughs> ha, give me a beat. Yeah. Acts 1, 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Beatbox. Yo, Beatbox out. See you in a little bit. All right, friends, get ready. First, I'm going to teach the legs. Then the arms, and yep, you got it. We're gonna put everything together from the top. And we're gonna make it work. All right, let's do it. Starting with your feet. You're gonna go single, single, double, double, starting with your left foot. Here we go. Five, six, seven, starting with your single, single, and double. Perfect. Now let's add the words. Here we go. Five, six, seven goes. You will receive power. Good. All right, now, next part is you're gonna step with your right foot, step out and in. Good, now from the top with the words. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit. Perfect. Now, the next part is you're gonna step with your left foot forward, and you're gonna put your feet together. Let's try it again, that was pretty hard. Five. Six, starting with your left step forward, together. Good, now the words for that has come upon you. Got it, let's do it from the top, just the legs and the words. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Good, you guys are pros. All right, now let's work with the hands. Five, six, seven, goes. All you're gonna do is point with your right, you will receive, that's it. Power, you're gonna show me your muscles. Let me see your muscles, ah yeah, good, awesome. Now, let's put that together. Five, six, seven, goes. You will receive power, good. Now, next part, the Holy Spirit, I just want you to use your left hand and bring it and point the back of your hand to me. Got it? Here you go, it looks like this. Point to me and bring it down. Got it? There's Holy Spirit. Good. It now has come. Put your arms out. Are you grabbing a t-shirt? Got it? Grab your t-shirt in front of you and I want you to put it on. Put it on. That's it. So it's has come upon you. Good. Let's try it again. Five, six, just the t-shirt part. Has come upon you. Good. Now let's do the whole thing, just the arms. Five, six, Seven goes, you will receive power as the Holy Spirit has come put the t-shirt on. Good, now we're gonna do the legs, the arms, and we'll put it together from the top. Here we go, five, six, seven goes, you will receive power. Good, as the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Perfect, now practice, rewind it, do it over as many times as you can, now let's call Mr. Beatbox, you ready? Let's do it. Mr. Beatbox, I'm Mr. Beatbox. Hey, hey Mr. Beatbox. Are you ready to do this? I think they're ready. You guys ready? They're ready. Let's get it. Give me a beat. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's see if you practice. Acts 1, 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Good, come on. Let's do it again. Go. Five, six, seven goes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Good, one last time. Here we go. Acts 1, 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Ha! Thanks a lot, friends. See you later, Mr. Beatbox. Keep practicing. Hi-ya! What's up, guys? I'm so excited to be here wearing my cape. It feels nice wearing a cape. I feel like a superhero. Speaking of superheroes, we're just gonna leave that off. We're gonna be talking about superheroes and superpowers. It's gonna be awesome because when I think of superheroes like Spidey and Superman and even the Green Lantern who wears a ring. If you don't know who the Green Lantern is, you're about to find out. And then it makes me think about this guy named Jesus. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who Jesus is. 
He is the guy. But let's talk about the superheroes first. The superheroes have superpowers. Like Superman, strong, can fly, x-ray vision, super strong. I know I said that twice, but it's really important. And then Spider-Man can cling to walls and do all the things a spider can do, right? Green Lantern actually has a ring and whatever he thinks about, after putting his ring into this lantern, he gets to actually create it. And you can actually see what, at, what it looks like. Like if he's trying to make a huge giant train to blast through a wall, he gets to do that just by using the ring as his power. Awesome. Superheroes have powers, but the difference is Jesus is powerful. He actually is the person who can heal, he saved us, and he can do a number of different things, right? And so with healing, he says that you can actually lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. He is our superpower if you think about it. When we go to him, when we know him, when he's a part of our life, we lay hands on the sick and he heals them and they recover. That's his promise for us. So I want you to think about that a little bit where Superman has powers and the Green Lantern has the ability to create stuff. Jesus Christ is our superpower. He is what brings healing. He is what brings saving. He is what brings uh, your family together. He is those things. So when you think about it and you think about laying your hands on the sick, on people who don't feel well, on people who are hurting or in pain, um, maybe have broken something on their body, when you lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus, he's gonna come through you and heal that person and they're gonna recover. That's his promise. So I hope that helps you guys. I'm super excited to know about superpowers, but I love even more knowing Jesus. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm kicking cowboy Carl. Wait. And I'm kicking. No, I'm kicking. Hi, I'm kicking cowboy Carl. I'm punching. I'm Joe. I punch things. Pete, it's Pete. I'm punching Pete. Today, today Jesus. we're talking about spiritual, spiritual God, authority. God authority. First thing you need to know about spiritual authority is that you need protection for your knees so you can get on your knees and pray to God. Also, protection. it's really important to use advanced protection by the green man. Helps you stay <coughs> nice and. Jesus! God! Holy God! Lord. Now the Bible says God will break down every stronghold. Yeah, we're trying to profess. All right. So the Bible talks about break, God. God will break down every stronghold. So sometimes you just need to break that stronghold like this. Notice how it came tumbling down like wall of Jericho. Jer like the walls of Jericho. I Okay, hold on. Here, this this way you can bring it. You're not filming, right? Uh, God. And this is how you, you break a completely strong board stronghold with power of God. Completely un untampered with. Jesus! Still hurts? Yeah. We saw it in everything, man. How I'm punching Pete. And this is when the spirit of the living God enters your life, it gives you supernatural strength. And I'm gonna use my strength to break, bend it. Spirit of living God! You gotta use it. This is when you need the knee pads. Dang, it hurt me. Watch me bend this pop with no hands. <clears throat> Look here now. Power Jesus. Power God. So you just gotta break that stronghold. Like this. <laughs> oh, what's this you might ask? It's not a soda break. This here is a. a uh, unlabeled can of soda cannery pop. I'm gonna break it with the power of God. The, oh. in, the name of, in the name of the power of Jesus, Jesus Christ, break this can! <laughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me. It won't break, just drink some of it. Can I? Yeah, drink. We gotta get it to break on camera. Just drink a little bit. Don't, they don't know? No. Hold that. We're gonna cut all this stuff out anyway, it's fine. 
It's a bubbly. Oh, it's bubbly, huh? <laughs> Hold my gum in here. And, and this is the power of God against the soda. And it, a very darkness. Completely full, untampered with can of soda pop. Here we go. Power of God! Ow. Ow. I think you're bleeding. Can we get some stitches? Get a doctor in the house. And that's what you can do with the power of God. What's my, what are my lines? The Bible says that there, walls of Jericho, but this is what God does. Power of God's oh! Oh. <laughs> Never, never stop trusting in Jesus. All right, now, hey, the Bible says God will give you the, uh, God will give you strength to break through walls, spiritual walls, spiritual, spiritual, spiritual walls of darkness in your life. And this is what God, this is what it looks like when the Spirit of God. Oh, God. And that's the power of God. Now, boys and girls, there comes a time in life where maybe something's blocking you. Well, if that's ever the case, just keep on trucking. Oh! Man, I was, wasn't time yet. Never stop going. Now you're going through it. And life just keeps you down. It's important to go through life with friends. This one. Because friends will pray together, get Cause, things done. Because iron sharpens iron. All right, we're going to pray together. Now, boys and girls, we'd just like to take our hats off to you. And thank you for joining us today. I didn't fix my hair. We hope. I'm gonna keep mine on, but I'm gonna I, take my hat off to you. I salute you. And thanks for joining us today. And we hope you learned something about the power of God and how, how powerful God is. Because okay? I'm I'm kicking Cowboy Carl. No. I'm punishing Pete. This here's and this has been Spiritual Authority and Power of God. Spirit, with, with kicking cow, Cowboy Carl and Punch Pete. Remember, don't try this at home unless you buy our tape. I think the key is the end of the ground. Maybe use less of your eyes and more of your forehead. Jesus! Can I get a new one? This tastes like tape. There, I'll hold it. Ow! You actually broke one. That was impressive. Yeah, I did. I'm it's all about making it look like you're about to break it. Totally. Okay. Oh, man! Did you get that on camera? Did you saw that one, too? <laughs> I saw it. You broke them clean in half, brother. You saw it? Did you saw it? I, no, I didn't saw it. I saw it. D tell me the camera's on. Eyes. Camera on? Hey, we get that? Oh man, that's a good one. Man. <laughs> Come on. We're going to be rich after that one. Hey, mom, people I'm afraid of this one. Stuff. People, people are going to pay us to see that stuff. Hello, friends. Uh, welcome to Awaken Church. We're here to uh, talk to you about the Bible, about, you know, the Word of God, and all sorts of good stuff. So uh, let's say we uh, dive in. <laughs> Just kidding. It's actually me, the same guy. And I know what you're thinking. What happened to his face? It was once covered with hair, but now it's not. That's exactly what happened. It was once covered with hair, and now it's only partially covered with hair. But don't worry, it's the same guy underneath all that beautiful beard and mustache. Still the same dude. So, let's dive into it. As you know, we are in our Power Plug series. Now, our Power Plug series is focusing on, you guessed it, power and authority. So today, I wanna talk to you about the Old Testament power versus the old school power. Now, you probably don't really understand what I'm talking about when I say old school power, because there's like a whole group of amazing men of God that did such incredible stuff you probably just haven't heard about because it just doesn't get talked about that much. But let's start off with the Old Testament. So Old Testament power, okay? So you've seen miracles, you've heard miracles um, in the Old Testament times, like we talked about Elijah and Elisha, two of the most amazing prophets of God in the Old Testament. They did all sorts of cool things. They uh, brought people back from the dead. Uh, remember Elisha's bones when he had died, they buried his bones and then they, he was dead and then they took another dead guy and they're like, Oh, well, this guy's dead, so I'm just gonna throw him on in this into this grave. Threw him in the grave. When the, when the dude uh, touched the bones of Elisha, poof, he came back to life. Like crazy, insane, insane stories. Well, after Jesus comes and like we're all adopted into the body of Christ, that, that brings us into the New Testament, which means like current day. Like we're still living in the New Testament, right? Well, one, two, one, two, three, eyes 
on me. One, two, three, eyes on me. Say the one, two, three, eyes on me and Nailed it, <laughs> got you good. So we're talking about the New Testament, right? We're still currently living in the New Testament. Well, again, I bring you back to old school power, old school faith. There was a time before like nowadays, nowadays you don't really hear a whole lot of cool, crazy miracles regarding healing unless it involves someone with cancer or any other kind of disease like that. But mostly the, th the stuff that we deal with today, you can get um, you catch like you're healing by taking medicine or like going to see the doctor and that's great That's why God like provided us with doctors and with hospitals. That's incredible. Not a bad thing But back in the day like in the early 1900s There is people like a man named John G. Lake and a guy named Smith Wigglesworth And those are the kind of guys I want to tell you about because those same kind of miracles that they performed we can see today so let me break it down for you. So this guy, John G. Lake, everybody say it with me. Say John G. Lake, like the body of water. So John G. Lake was an incredible guy. He, he had a healing ministry. Now what that meant is basically when he was very young, he was very sick and on his deathbed. And then all of a sudden he was uh, prayed for by someone and, oh shoot, I don't know if that's actually true. I can't remember how he got his healing. Got it. So John G. Lake, when he was a kid, uh, he was very sick and when he was healed, it was a miraculous healing like he should have been dead But he wasn't well that opened up the doors for him to have this healing ministry So he spent a lot of years of his life healing people that were deathly ill In fact, there's one story in particular where he was living under a very real plague What a plague is is basically like this disease or virus or bacteria that had taken, like, come into the world and was like killing tons of people, people foaming at the mouth and dying. Very real stuff. Well, he walked into the, like the center of this place in a foreign country where people were dying left and right and it was crazy. He showed up and there was these people with like hazard, hazmat suits on and like they're all dressed up to protect themselves from <sighs> like all this crazy stuff, right? Well, he walks in and they're like, hey, sir, stop right there. You can't go any further unless you have all this protective gear on and he's like he's like hold up uh, that stuff can't harm me it doesn't affect me um, and they're like well that's not how this stuff works buddy and he's like all right let me show you he walked over to someone who was who was dying on their deathbed he scooped up the foam from their mouth which was very infectious with this nasty stuff and he put it under a microscope and they saw that the bacteria the virus all that nasty stuff that was killing people was actually dying in his hands and that's because he had faith that no matter what he took god at his word he took jesus at his word and that stuff couldn't hurt him so that's one story with that guy now let's talk about another guy smith wigglesworth who had mentioned earlier now smith wigglesworth was an incredible dude in fact he's by far one of my favorite like recent heroes in the faith. Now, the reason I say that is because he lived an incredible ministry life. Um, this guy got saved when he was like, I think in his 40s, maybe even his 50s. Um, but he did some really, truly incredible stuff. He uh, was known for uh, raising 14 people recorded from the dead, and he did a ton of miracles and healings in his, his life of ministry. So this guy was a little bit unconventional. Um, he was known for his, and I quote, violent healing ministry. He believed that if you have an ailment in your body, it's a physical manifestation of the devil in your body. So uh, in his words, he said, you've got to handle the devil roughly. So uh, for instance, there's one story where this lady came up to him in his like ministry and she's like, she says, I have stomach cancer and I want to get healed. And so he was, he was very well known for being very loud and, and, and obvious. He'd raise his hands to God and he'd say, do you believe you're gonna be healed? And like, yeah. And then he would activate that healing in this instance by punching the place where the cancer was living. <clears throat> so he punched this lady in the stomach and that was a little unconventional, a little violent. Some might call it physical assault. He called it healing ministry. So this lady gets punched in the gut who had stomach cancer. Well, one falls over, 
but she proceeds to cough out this cancerous glump of black nastiness. This is documented, like this is real legit stuff. So she coughs out this cancerous thing, then she doesn't have cancer after that. This healing ministry is incredible. And then another really great story, one of my favorites. <laughs> my gosh, I love it. So the uh, Smith Wigglesworth, Wigglesworth goes, he was invited to a funeral. Now, for those of you that don't know what a funeral is, it's where people come around and they mourn and celebrate the life of someone who had died, right? So he gets invited to this funeral of this guy who he didn't even know. He knew the person that invited him. So he goes to this funeral, reluctantly, he gets there and he's standing at the back. And um, as the eulogy is being said, done, whatever, people are talking, oh, Brother Joe is a good man. He loved God. He was good to his family and he'll be very missed and very, we'll all be very sad for his passing. And he got so fed up with all the stuff people were saying that he walked through the middle of the aisle, up to the casket, past everybody, and you can imagine what people are thinking. Oh my goodness, this guy is just walking up to the to the casket of Uncle Joe. And he walks over, grabs this, this dead guy, and pulls him out of the casket, puts him up against the wall. He says, in Jesus, or he said, live in Jesus' name. He falls to the ground because, you know, dead. Uh, so then he picks him up, puts him against the wall, and says, in the name of Jesus, live, and falls again. And so, third time's a charm, he picks up this dead guy, puts him up against the wall, and he says, I said live in Jesus' name, and the guy came back to life. True story, again, recorded history, people. You don't see this every day, but this guy had such a, a tenacious faith that he believed whatever Jesus said, that he could do it. He could cast out demons, he could heal the sick, he could raise people from the dead. But, kind of a, a little background, when, when Smith Wigglesworth had died, they, uh, they noticed that on his knees, part of his knee bone, his patella, right there, did you see it? Good. So part of his knee bone was actually missing. And then when they went through his house, they found that there's a section of his wood floor that was actually indented and it was about a foot apart. So it's rumored and it's believed that he spent a lot of time praying in that spot, which left the indent in the, in the wood and also parts of his bone were missing. <laughs> from his knees. Uh, that would have been really difficult to walk, but you know, he's a praying man. But he spent so much time in his house praying one-on-one -on -one with Jesus that he actually believed that what Jesus said he could do. So I wanna encourage you guys that if you want to do amazing things for God, if you want to do amazing things to help people heal the sick, um, see miracles happen, to perform miracles with your own hands, if you wanna do stuff that Jesus said that you can do, you take that power, you take that authority, and you do it through an intimate relationship with Jesus. So, God damn it. <laughs> intimate relationship with Jesus. Yeah. So if you wanna do amazing things with God, for God, and for other people, then spend some time with God. Spend some time praying, uh, getting to know the person that Jesus is. Because remember, just like Mitch said, Jesus is your superpower. This has been Story Time with me, Christian, and I will catch you next time. So, until next time, I'll feel the same. Wow, Mr. Christian, that was incredible. Have you guys ever heard those stories before? I want to be just like Mr. Wigglesworth, and I bet you do too. So here's what we're going to do. Let's pray. Let's all pray together. Can we all do that? Okay, so man, remember, it doesn't matter if you guys bow your heads, close your eyes, open them. Just maybe close your mouths, because right now we're going to listen to God and we're gonna to talk to God. So if you're in agreement with what I'm saying, just say amen or think it in your head. But otherwise, just listen to God, see what he says to you, okay? All right, here we go. Father God, we love you so much. We're so grateful for all the men and women that you've used in the past to do incredible things for you. And each of us here today wanna to do something incredible for you too. So today, we just say, God, we're here. We want to do things for you. We want to help heal people. We want to help minister to people. We want to tell people about who you are and how great you are. So use us, God. I pray that for each of us in the room today, in Jesus' name, amen. It's as simple as that, you guys. You guys now can get up. You can go pray for your friends. You can pray for your family members, anybody you know, and you can see God move on your behalf and on their behalf to help them. 
I, I know God's going to do incredible things. So if you leave here today and you go pray for somebody and God does something big, I want you to come back and tell us about it, okay? Tell your teachers we want to know what God's doing through you because we know you each have that same power that Mr. Wigglesworth and all these other Bible heroes had. I'm so excited to hear your stories. We're going to get started on the rest of service today. So sit on down. Here comes your teacher.